I know we were expecting some new developments this weekend, but some of them have failed quality control. Make sure you indicate what you'd like redeveloped via the workstation. Hello everyone and welcome back to my F1 2018 career mode. Here's the around Monaco. Um, now just, just to, uh, obviously there's the uh, R&D that failed and um, went through. Um, but just before we get into it, uh, I just want to say this is the first race I did back from Singapore, so I hadn't been on the game for about two weeks or so. So um, excuse the bad driving in this, but um, without further ado, let's get into qualifying for the Monaco Grand Prix. Here we are at one of the most difficult circuits on the racing calendar. Welcome to Monaco for today's Formula One qualifying. This is the kind of track that eats rear tyres for breakfast, or so I'm told by more experienced drivers than myself. No matter how good a driver is at managing their throttle application to limit rear slip, they can't always overcome a car that's inherently bad at looking after its rear tyres. Here we have a lot of low speed corner exits, which means a whole load of energy, heat and tyre wear. So yes, welcome to the Monaco Grand Prix weekend on, in my career mode. Um, obviously, as I said earlier on, um, this is the first race that I came back to from Singapore. And yes, it wasn't the best timing that I've done by myself. Um, the first track that you come back to on the game when you haven't been on it for about two weeks is Monaco. So um, that wasn't the best, but um, I will be doing a lot of laps in qualifying, obviously. Uh, so this is going to be um, probably most of the laps that I've done in, in that I did in the qualifying session. Uh, so as we come across the line, then to start our second lap of the session on the Hypersofts, um, seeing them for the first time this season, I think. Um, I think Monaco was the first time we saw Hypersofts this year. Pretty sure it was. Um, so coming across the line, then from our second lap, we are about two tenths, three tenths up on our time. And that puts us in 16th place. So um, obviously not finding the true potential of the car right now. But um, I'm sure we will over the next coming few races. Because obviously I'm, I'm back now from Singapore. Um, so there will be, uh, you know, videos will be coming out again cons consistently. Um, there'll be a few new things coming out as well. In terms of new series is. And uh, yeah, it's all the usual stuff. But uh, coming across the line to start our... Fourth lap of the uh, qualifying session, Q1, um, and hopefully we can get through to Q2. I mean, I want to do that at least because the car should be not should not be going out in Q1, um, assuming as we are the uh, second best team behind Renault in the uh, midfield. So, you know, we should be getting into the top 15 at least. Um, and as we come across line and we did qualify 15th, but there was still a few mi a few seconds left. So I don't know what happened. Um, Alonso there doing quite well to qualify, or to get through, sorry, in uh, P4, so that's not bad from him, although um, one of the Red Bulls, Ferraris and Mercedes did qualify on Super Softs, so um, that's not really, or was it Ultra Softs, I can't really tell, um, but we do, act, we do manage to get through to Q2, so um, that's good, uh, just about in um, P15, although I say that, there was about five cents between it, between me and Hartley, so I mean, it wasn't that much of a close gap to this, but um, going into Q2 then, um, I didn't really manage to do that many laps in this session, um, I, don't, I can't remember why, uh, I did record this a few days ago, um, from, what I'm, from when I'm doing this uh, post-com, so I can't remember um, when I, well how many laps I did in this, but um, coming across line and to qualify, well to start off the qualify session in P7, that drops us down to P15, um, and now with a minute, just over a minute left, we're now starting our second lap um, of the qualifying session. And hopefully we can improve to not qualify P15, because that would just be embarrassing. Uh, well, not really embarrassing, but, you know. Uh, but, um, yeah, coming around the final corner then to qualify in... Well, actually, we're improving by about three tenths there. And we come across the line and we're in P14 at the moment. But obviously there are people still on a lap, and we managed to qualify in P14, which is a bit unfortunate. Only three tenths off Fernando, actually. So, it's not that bad. The two Renaults, as you'd expect, doing quite well, best of the rest, because they are the best of the rest. Um, so, P14 isn't that bad, considering I hadn't been on the game for, you know, two weeks, as I said earlier. But I'll stop using that as an, as an excuse now. And um, moving on to the race, then, we should hopefully... 
try and get some points. Um, depending on if there's an incident in the first corner of the first lap, who knows what could happen. Um, this is Monaco after all. I mean, I might retire by hitting the wall because... I don't really like Monaco that much on the game. But um, yeah, uh, as you can see there, our um, rivalry is going pretty well with Alonso and Perez. Um, getting a lot of resource points here. Um, not as many as I'd like because we didn't get through to Q3. So, you know, it's not that bad. But we still have um, just under 2,000 points. Um, the reputation of the team has gone down a little bit. A tiny weeny bit. But um, yeah, apart from that qualifying session... Um, let's hope we can improve in the race, and uh, without further ado, let's get into the Monaco Grand Prix. Obviously, I expected a better session, but these things happen from time to time. Try to make up for it in the race. A proper road race, and in the true meaning of the word. That was how Mr. Monaco, the late great Graham Hill, once described this iconic event. The cars we drive have come a long way in the intervening half century, but still we race on those same public roads beside the Mediterranean Sea. There's no victory more coveted than that of the Monaco Grand Prix. Almost ready to go then, and this is what the starting grid looks like for today's race. Kimi Raikkonen's perfect lap yesterday sees him start from pole position, with Sebastian Vettel starting alongside. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Ricardo, Bottas, Max Verstappen, and Hamilton, Hulkenberg, Sainz, Alonso, and Kevin Magnussen, Grosjean, Ocon, Charles Leclerc, Williams, Perez, Hartley, Pierre Gasly, and Marcus Ericsson. Stroll and Sergei Sorotkin rounds off the grid. Now it's almost time to lights out, so let's go down to the track. No heroics into Sandoval, please. We're in amongst the pack and just need to stay in one piece. Jeff there obviously is an expert in F1 and knows how to take Sandoval um, because... I'm obviously not going to go steamrolling into turn one because that's just stupid. Um, but uh, yeah, here we are then for the Monaco Grand Prix. Um, hopefully we can have a good race. Obviously a one-stop strategy going from the Ultras to the Super Softs, I think it was. Um, but uh, here are the five red lights then. We've got three lights, four lights, it's five lights. Lights out and we go here for the Monaco Grand Prix. We've got us to a relatively decent start. Unfortunately, Perez has got alongside us there and taken us, but... Um, we now have the Constantino effect of uh, Monaco Grand Prix as Ocon goes into the wall because of Perez, um, ironically enough, um, after what happened in Singapore. But uh, we're going up the hill now and uh, we're now going to try and go down the inside of Brendan Hartley into this corner, are we? No, we've been tagged by Stroll behind and now Stroll has managed to get past us there. And um, I don't know how he thinks that's fair, so we just dive it down the inside of him here. And uh, we managed to get that place back. And now there's a huge traffic jam going into the hairpin. So we just dive down the inside of everyone. Um, dive it down the inside of Ocon. Ocon loses his front wing. And yeah, that pretty much sums up Monaco there in about five seconds. Um, but uh, we managed to get past Ocon there. So we're not going to be stuck behind him in the front wing, which is good. Um, so moving on to lap six of the Grand Prix then. We now have the leaders who have pit from their Hypersofts. As uh, Raikkonen goes around the outside of us there going into the... Um, came after the tunnel and uh, obviously this is going to happen um, but now as we come to the end of lap six as you can see there my front left and my front right are really really hot in terms of temperature but they weren't going down like I wasn't driving any less normal than I would like I never had this issue in um, qualifying so I don't know what was going on uh, I don't know if it was something to do with the setup or something, but you can see how slow we are going right now. With the amount of understeer that we're getting, it's unbelievable. And now we have uh, Verstappen going for a look down the inside, but unfortunately he didn't manage to work that out. And um, obviously, with that heating issue, I thought it was just the tyres, so I decided to come in for a pit stop um, to see if that would fix it. Uh, because I really didn't know what was going on. Like, 
I, I wasn't driving any less normal than I was normally. Um, that didn't make any sense. But I was I was driving exactly the same as how I was in quali, and I didn't have any issues in qualifying. So I don't know what was going on. Maybe this is some sort of glitch at Monaco or something. I don't know. But um, as we come out of the pit lane then in stone dead last, um, which is a bit unfortunate to be honest. Um, so uh, yeah, this this is not going well so far for us. But um, yeah, catching up to the back of Esteban Ocon now, who's in a train of about five cars, I think it is, or something. Um, so I don't know what's going on here, but we're going to go around the outside of Esteban Ocon here, um, going into the final few corners. And uh, we do the switch back, and we've got a better exit there. And uh, obviously with him being in a Mercedes engine, yes, I know I'm in lean, uh, but I've now put it up into high, and we go down the inside. Yes, that is a huge corner cut. I know that. But I didn't care at the time because I was just driving around Monaco. Didn't really want to cause a crash. And uh, again, I'm having the same tyre heating issue as I was before. And it's always with the front left. Uh, the front left is the worst. I don't know why. As Esteban Ocon goes down the inside of his there. Hits the inside barrier. And um, he's lost a bit of his front wing there, which is unfortunate for him. But um, yeah, I, I was having... Like, it wasn't even cooling down that much either. And I don't know what was going on. It was very strange. Um, so I don't know if this is some sort of glitch to do with the game that's recently occurred because of the new patches that have come out or something. I don't know. But I still have pace on the Sorokin at least. Which, well, I mean, you're obviously going to have pace on Sorokin because he's in the Williams. But um, going down the inside of Sorokin then um, up into 18th place. And um, cutting on to lap 20 of the Grand Prix then, as you can see, I still have the same issue. It's been it's been all race long. The tyre temps has now gone up to 110. And you can, you can see how slow this is going to be now. This is going to be an entire lap on board. And it's just... It's, it's, it's quite hard to watch, if I'm honest. Um, I really don't know how I coped with driving around with this. But I wasn't driving like any other way I was driving like how I was in qualifying and how I would any other race so this is the first time I've had this issue I don't know if it's a glitch in the game or what but I decided to retire um, so yeah unfortunately that's a retirement for us at the Monaco Grand Prix it was and Anthony Davidson give me your thoughts how did they accomplish this result I think a large part of the result comes down to temperament they were able to keep their heads when everyone around them was losing theirs and that's allowed them to get the best out of the car to maximize the strategy and to stay out of trouble so here they come now out onto the podium wherever you go anywhere in the world the prancing horse flags are dominant in the grandstands and they're out in force again today. It's Ferrari on the top step once more. So the final race classification then sees Kimi Raikkonen win from Sebastian Vettel, so it's Ferrari 1-2 as, uh, wow, 25 seconds between the top 12. That's, um, that's quite incredible, actually. Um, anyway, uh, it's a Red Bull 3-4 and then a Mercedes 5-6, so um, it's 2x2x2 two by two by two in the top 6. And then we have Hulkenberg, Grosjean, Sainz, Alonso, uh, Perez, Leclerc, Gasly and then Magnussen who finished miles behind Gasly, um, so I don't know why there was such a big gap there, but, um, and then we have Ocon, Hartley, Sorokin, Stroll, and then of course myself retiring from the Grand Prix, which is unfortunate. But um, I'm sure, I don't know what was going on with the tyres. Um, I'm sure one of you will let me know in the comments. Uh, I, like, I've recorded Canada since then, and I've not had that issue. Um, but moving on to the driver's standings then, we, move, we have moved down a spot once again, because of uh, Nico Hulkenberg's consistent points results. 
Um, Fernando is still in 12th, unfortunately not got the um, amount of points that I'd have hoped from him, to be honest, because he is quite a good driver. But um, Sebastian Vettel has taken the lead of the um, driver standings then, and Kimi Raikkonen has moved above Daniel Ricciardo. So um, after his um, patchy start to the season, uh, Raikkonen is gaining back some points. And in the constructors, Renault have overtaken McLaren. Um, and that, personally, I think the constructors is basically how the performance chart looks, actually, so it's quite fair. Um, and uh, obviously, in the rivalry standings, we are obviously going to uh, lose out on a lot of points there, um, losing both rivalries now, so that's unfortunate. And uh, we're not going to get a lot of resource points, unfortunately. But um, that's what happens when you have to retire from a Grand Prix. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm sure one of you will let me know in the comments down below what that was. Um, I don't know if it was a glitch or not, but I've never had that issue before in the game. And I don't really know what was going on. Um, obviously, the reputation with the teams has gone down by quite a bit. But, um, yeah, if you have enjoyed this episode, please leave a like and a comment and subscribe for more. And we'll see you all next time. Goodbye. What on earth was that performance? Come on, this isn't bumper cars at the fairground. Your results and conduct here matter, so pay more attention. We can't afford too many races like that.